Hello and welcome to another podcast in this series on self-driving cars and the social nature of traffic. I'm Eric Winkhuizen. I used to work in the self-driving car industry as a researcher, and while I was there, I became convinced that self-driving cars are a really bad idea. Of course, many people are coming to the same conclusion now. Even Tesla had to admit the poor performance of its FSD. To defend itself against a lawsuit brought by a customer who claimed that its full self-driving software was a fraud, Tesla argued that it was not a fraud, it was just a failure. But saying it is a failure is hardly an explanation for why these systems are failing. For that we need principled arguments rooted in empirical observation, and that is the reason for my YouTube channel. In my last podcast, I analyzed an interaction between a Waymo robo-taxi and a family of four, in which the robo-taxi confused them. It got so bad that the passenger of the robo-taxi rolled down his window and said, Sorry, self-driving car. The apology did little to reduce the confusion, however, as the mother and the robo-taxi then started to go at the very same time. Thankfully, the mother noticed and quickly returned to the sidewalk. As the robo-taxi went, the passenger said to the family, it, it, It's easier, so no worries about that. <laughs> In this podcast, I will address that statement. It sees you, so there's no worries about that. And I will argue that a self-driving car cannot see the world in the way people see the world at all. And because of that, there is a lot to worry about. The process by which a self-driving car sees the world is based on the cognitive psychological theory which takes perception to be an internal process in which information coming from the sensors, in the case of self-driving cars, lidars and cameras, is transformed into an internal representation of the outside world. Developing perception algorithms is a very hard engineering problem because the information coming from the sensors is nothing more than a matrix of numbers that represent either color information, in the case of cameras, or distance information, in the case of lidars. The details of perception algorithms are a closely guarded secret of autonomous vehicle manufacturers, but we can gain at least some insight into the process by looking at the visualizations the different companies have made of the internal world. This video from Zooks, an autonomous vehicle startup bought by Amazon, is especially illuminating. In the top half of the Zooks video, we see the image taken from three of the onboard cameras onto which some geometrical shapes have been superimposed that show how the perception algorithms have processed the image into an internal world model. The bottom part of the Zooks video provides a visualization of the autonomous vehicle's internal world model, which also includes information that is not processed from the sensors, but comes from high definition maps, such as the road and crosswalks. This world model looks like a video game, where all cars are blue boxes, all pedestrians are pink cylinders, and all bicyclists are purple boxes. There are two main things that the visualizations reveal. First, the internal representation of the outside world invariably contains errors. To label a group of pixels or LiDAR points as a member of a category, a car, say, the system must calculate how well that group of pixels matches that category and then use a threshold above which it deserves that label but below which it does not get that label. Such a threshold necessarily has a certain arbitrariness. Logically, perception algorithms therefore make two types of errors. Sometimes a sensory input matches an object stored in the database, when in reality it should not. These are called false positives. And sometimes a group of pixels does not reach the threshold when it should have, and those are false negatives. It is not hard to see the errors when you look at videos of self-driving cars. Just stop any YouTube video of a self-driving car and compare the outside world with the internal display. There are usually some discrepancies. Here is one such an error, a funny one, from a Tesla FSD ride in downtown Asheville, North Carolina. Person getting in the car in the middle of the road, it, it messed up there, to be fair. It's seen all the people. 
The Tesla momentarily recognizes the pedestrian with the dog as a motorcycle. Apparently, taken together, the shape of the dog sitting in front of its upright human owner reached the threshold of a motorcycle object, at least for a moment. A typical false positive. Pedestrians are perhaps particularly tricky. Just look at how these pedestrians on a Tesla FSD display suddenly appear, then disappear, and move about in unpredictable ways. Errors in perception don't just show up on the internal display. They can also lead to poor driving decision. False positive, seeing an object that is not really there for instance, can lead to braking for no reason. Many Tesla FSD customers have reported this phantom braking problem, especially disconcerting on the highway, as you can imagine. But Waymo, which has much more sophisticated sensing hardware than Tesla, is not immune to the problem of false positives. Object? Slow down for safety. You can hear the robo-taxi slam on the brake briefly, and the internal screen shows a message that the car slowed down for an object. A few moments later, the object is no longer detected and the Waymo continues on its way. But there was never anything there. Autonomous vehicle perception mistakes are not limited to errors in categorization. There can be errors in the attributes of objects as well. Here FSD makes a funny mistake concerning an object's orientation. No, 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 no. Oh, this is... <laughs> It thinks this is getting behind this car, but it doesn't realize that this is you. Got, I mean, you see what's happening. See, it look. It thinks it's backwards, but that's the front of the truck. Note how, in this case, the visualization is very helpful to the driver. He can see that FSD's perception is making an error, and therefore knows that he must take over. The clip highlights a crucial difference between the autonomous vehicle software and the human drivers. The software is blissfully unaware that it is making a mistake, and the only hope is that it will correct itself when it receives new data from the next sensor sweep. Humans, by contrast, can see both the real world and the visualization of the internal world, and when the two are incompatible, they know they can trust their own eyesight and that the system is making a mistake. The second thing the visualizations inside self-driving cars demonstrate is that even when it does not make a mistake, per se, the perceptual process of self-driving cars produces a world model that is both an abstraction and a dramatic simplification from reality. Every car no matter whether it is a brand new sports car or an old clunker, is a blue box. And every pedestrian, no matter their age or ability, is represented by a pink cylinder. An autonomous vehicle can only see what the engineers consider to be relevant and is computationally achievable. All objects that the engineers deem to be unnecessary for driving are unclassified. Houses, trees, lampposts, and most stationary things are just indistinct stuff visualized by Zooks as gray walls. In Tesla FSD's visualization, these stationary objects are left out entirely. While it is totally understandable that the engineers must use such simplifications, it raises important questions. How certain can we be that these simplifications are warranted in every situation? Do the details of what people can effortlessly see when they drive really not matter for driving? Can you really be safe without seeing the world in all its detail? Of course, self-driving car apologists argue that self-driving cars don't need to see the world in all its detail to be safe. Take this example from an older presentation by Chris Urmson, who was the head of autonomous vehicles at Google at the time. His presentation was called, How an Autonomous Vehicle Sees the World. So, just a couple of months ago, our vehicles were driving through Mountain View, and this is what we encountered. This is a woman in an electric wheelchair chasing a duck in circles on the road. <laughs> Now, it turns out there is nowhere in the DMV handbook that tells you how to deal with that. But our vehicles were able to encounter that, slow down and drive safely. 
Chris's point was that his autonomous vehicle did the appropriate and safe thing, namely stop and wait. He was clearly pleased with how the autonomous vehicle handled this unusual situation with aplomb. But while the car took the right action, it did so without any understanding of the situation. The robo-taxi had no notion that it was looking at a woman in a wheelchair chasing a duck with a broom. Is it really fine that a self-driving car stops for something in the road, but can't identify what is going on? Consider this scene from a Tesla FSD drive in San Francisco. Up ahead we have some police officers waving traffic through a stop sign next to Lombard Street, which means we're supposed to go through this stop sign. But because no one was behind me and because I'm an idiot, I decided to let the beta do its thing and not intervene. As you can see, the police officer is a bit confused, but there was pedestrians already in the crosswalk, so I, I honestly think this was fine and no big deal. FSD stops for what it thinks is a pedestrian, even though that pedestrian is a police officer who is waving the Tesla to go. But Tesla does not understand that and stops. The policeman gets so frustrated with the Tesla not responding to him urging it on that he changes the direction of traffic and makes the Tesla wait. But now that it should wait, the Tesla rolls forward several times, only to stop because of the pedestrian in the intersection. In the end, the Tesla crosses the intersection when the policeman has stepped away, but this correct behavior is entirely accidental. FSD never recognized the policeman for what he was, let alone that it understood that the policeman gave it permission to go. A policeman regulating traffic is not a detail you can ignore. People do not just drive through a world of moving objects, but see people and the activities they are engaged in, and in that social context the official rules of the road may have to be suspended. Consider that sometimes people are demonstrating and occupying the streets. How can a self-driving car recognize this group activity if all it can see are individual people? And the thing is, in public spaces, people expect others to be able to see and understand who they are and what they are doing. The policeman we looked at before counts on the Tesla driver to see him as a person with legal authority who is regulating traffic. And that counts not just for the policeman, it counts for the demonstrators as well. Indeed, we all trust that other drivers, pedestrians and bicyclists and whoever else is on the road, that they too can and indeed do see the world we collectively inhabit in much the same way as we do ourselves. Consider once more the scene in which the Waymo Robo Taxi encountered a family in Arizona. I called them a family because that is how I see them. Not four individuals, but a family, a mother and a father and two small children on toy cars. And it is not just that I saw them that way, they themselves expect to be seen this way. So when the man waves the Waymo on, he does so not as an individual, but as one of the responsible adults. He waves for all of them, not just himself. In that moment, the man relies on the driver's natural ability to see them as a family unit and certainly not as just four individual cylinders moving about in space. That just does not adequately describe the situation at all. And safety can be at stake. Consider this awful accident with the Tesla in Taiwan. A horrific accident, but I want to draw your attention to this person who is hard to see at first. He is walking in the left lane of this multi-lane highway, and given where he is and what he is doing, any driver would immediately understand that this person is not some lost pedestrian, but a man trying to warn other drivers about the danger ahead. And if the man had thought that other drivers would just see him as a cylinder moving slowly on the street, he would never have even considered walking towards traffic inside the lane like he does. I mean, it is very dangerous as it is. He clearly trusts that any oncoming drivers will see him as someone who is helpfully trying to warn them. Of course he does, and so would we all. Had the Tesla owner been driving the car instead of the software, a terrible accident might have been avoided. 
When I took my driving test many years ago, the examiner asked me to read the license plate of the car in front of me. I read it and he was satisfied that my eyesight was good enough to drive and we started the driving test. Behind that simple eyesight test was the assumption that if I could read the license plate of the car in front, I could also recognize people and dogs and knew that motorcycles are something entirely different. That I would not take lampposts or street signs for people or trailers for small semi-trucks. That I could recognize families and groups. That I could recognize a policeman when I encountered one and could see if the police was trying to pull me over or wave me on or not at all regulating traffic. That I understood what a restaurant is and that people who are eating there are not pedestrians. That children are not adults and that sometimes people may be trying to warn me about an upcoming danger. My examiner just assumed that because I could read the letters and numbers of the license plate of the car in front of me, I could see and understand the world in the way any sighted adult capable of getting a driver's license could see. Because if I could not, I simply would not be fit to drive and he would have stopped the test right there and then. Autonomous vehicles do not and cannot see the world in the way people do, not even close. Yet most of the time, autonomous vehicles drive just fine. And because of that, we think that an autonomous vehicle can see what it takes to drive safely. But that is absolutely not the case. Perception is not just some internal cognitive process of generating an abstract and simplified internal representation of the outside world. Such a model ignores that seeing is also a social skill. Not only have we learned to see the world in the same way as other people do, and trust that other people do so as well, we have also learned to demonstrate through behavior that we have seen something. A self-driving car completely lacks this social skill of perception. It drives through an internal video game-like world that invariably contains errors and lacks most of the details we simply count on other drivers to be able to see. So when the passenger of the Waymo tells the family, it sees you, so there's no worries about that, he has it exactly backwards. Autonomous vehicles can't really see you. And that should not only be a real worry, but indeed should be the reason not to allow them on our roads.